Good morning, Mike. How are you, big fella? I'm great. How you doing? Terry Collins, manager of the year? Oh, he's certainly in the conversation. Uh, you know, there's, there's going to be some pretty good candidates with uh, Joe Madden, Dusty Baker, uh, Dave Roberts. But uh, I, I, you got to put Collins' name in there just, you know, the way this team finished those 27 and 13 down the stretch with all the injuries and, uh, you know, to keep it together the way Terry Collins did, he'll certainly get some votes. Yeah, he really has done a good job. And the Mets last night, you were there. I was watching uh, what, what what a postseason atmosphere it was but and what a performance it was by both pitchers. I mean, Syndergaard was tremendous. Unfortunately, Mike, it's it's Madison Bumgardner once again lights out in the postseason. Yeah, he just has an uncanny ability to turn it on once October arrives. And because, you know, you look at what he did down the final two months of the regular season this year. wasn't that spectacular, but last night, you know, he just flipped that switch and, uh, you know, gave up a couple of hits, but was really never in any serious trouble there, never got into pitch count trouble. And, you know, he, he's their horse that they're going to try and ride here uh, through another uh, even year or maybe another championship. What was the game plan of the Mets last night against him? Were they trying to swing at, at first pitches last night? Yeah, I think they were trying to get to him early in the count, you know, thinking maybe the, the best pitch they would see was uh, early and uh, didn't work, you know. Uh, I'm trying to think they probably count only a couple of hard, what you would consider hard hit balls even because uh, the hits against him uh, weren't that hard. You know, T.J. Rivera had the double that was, a little bit of a floater. Rene Rivera, his hit wasn't hit that hard, so they, they didn't make they didn't make good contact against him. But yeah, I, I think they were trying to get to him early in the count. Yeah, and when you you're only throwing you know, 21 pitches over the first three innings, not not taxing your arm at all, you can stay in there and go the distance on a complete game four hitter. And on the flip side of that, I mean, you could not have asked Mike for any any more than than what you got from what the Mets got from Thor last night, Noah Syndergaard. Yeah, Syndergaard was brilliant. Um, you know, too bad from from the Mets' perspective. If they win, you, you know, this would be considered an all-time great Mets pitching performance. Still, you know, probably the the biggest performance of Syndergaard's career here, stepping up on this stage and throwing uh, two hitter over seven innings. Uh, had a couple of walks, but he he worked around them, and he, he got everything he could have wanted because you got the seven out of him. We set it up for Reed and uh, Familiar, your two horses in the late innings. And, uh, of course, Familiar gives up the three-run homer in the ninth, and that's it. Was there an option at all to, to leave him in, or was he done with the pitch count? No, I, I think with where the pitch count was, that was about it. Um, I think they would have really been rolling the dice uh, to get him out there in the eighth. And, hey, look, Reed worked out, worked mm -hmm. out of the eighth, worked out of trouble. You're still going to Familia in the ninth, even if Syndergaard pitches the eighth. So. Familia, that's my next topic. We're talking with Mike Puma, New York Post beat writer. Mets are out, and San Fran's moving on to Chicago. I know he had 51 saves regular season, but last year World Series blew a couple, three. I think two weren't his fault. One certainly was. And then last night uh, comes up and, and, and blows it. Uh, gives up the three-run homer to the unlikely hero. Uh, is there a little stigma going on here with Familia in the postseason? I, I think it's a fair enough question, just based on the, you know the way the World Series went last year. And as you mentioned, a couple of them, you know, you could argue whether they were his fault or not because he he came in with you know runners on base and such. But certainly the uh, home run he gave up to Alex Gordon in uh, Game One was all on Familia, and then. Uh, Last night, you know, he get he gives up the hit, and the, 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 I think the big at, at bat in the inning was, was the walk because uh, you know now Terry Collins maybe doesn't have as much flexibility if, if you want to pitch around Gillespie or whatever. So um, you know, we, we saw it so many times this year with Familia too, where he got into those kind of jams, and and ninety five percent of the time he worked out of it. Last night uh, he left the sinker up, and uh, the ball disappeared behind the right field fence. Hey, Mike, Zach, by hanging out with Roger in studio this morning. Uh, how are we supposed to characterize this season for the New York Mets? I know they overcame a lot of adversity, but it's an early exit. Was it a success, a failure, somewhere in between? Yeah, probably somewhere in between. You know, more toward the success side because they did overcome so much. 
you know, I, I still look at it when, when you get into the wild card, it, it almost seems like you, you weren't in the playoffs unless you win that wild card game and, and get into an actual uh, division series. But, uh, you know, at the same time, it's hard to argue against going 27 and 13 and overcoming all the injuries to the pitching rotation. So, you know, I, I hedge it more toward a successful season. But, it, you know, the, the expectations were so high coming in this year. But, you know, you obviously didn't foresee losing 60% of your starting rotation. No, and, and I would assume now, you, you know, time heals all wounds and this team comes back spring training next year and you get all these arms healthy again, you would think very high expectations again going into next season for this Mets team, Mike? You would think, but, you know, you, you almost don't know what to expect with some of these arms because Harvey's coming off uh, certainly a, a pretty serious surgery in regards to his career. Matt seems like he's always injured. DeGrom's coming back. Maybe you don't worry so much about him. But you, you just wonder what some of these arms are going to be now. Is Zach Wheeler anything or you know, is he shot? So there's going to be some major questions about this rotation. So I don't know if you, if you just pencil them in thinking that they're going to start it up and go again. I think you want to you want to see what these arms are first. Talking Mets baseball with Mike Puma, New York Post. What about Jonas Cespedes? What is his future in New York, or or have we seen Cespedes for the final time in a Mets uniform? I, I really think he wants to stay. Uh, it'll be up to the Mets to find some kind of, uh, you know, to make him happy enough uh, financially. He's got the opt-out. I'd be shocked if uh, he, he didn't opt out. Or, you know, maybe the Mets can can come to some kind of uh, agreement before he gets to that point. But I don't see him coming back for the two years and $47.5 million he's got left on his deal. So, you know, maybe if the Mets are willing to uh, add another 50 million in two years, Maybe that's enough to get it done, bringing the total package over 100 for four. But, uh, you know, he, he's certainly in a position to cash in this offseason, given what the uh, outfield market is. Mike Metz out. San Francisco's going to Chicago. Do you give them any shot? Yeah, you have to, just because of uh, their pedigree, the their postseason, the way they've played the last few years. You know, you look at so much of that nucleus is still there. A guy like Buster Posey's been there since 2010, and guys like Belt and Crawford and Pence and uh, Pagan—they're all season postseason players. So you have you have to give them a, a pretty good shot. And you know, Bumgarner won't pitch right away, but they have Cueto. Uh, you know, the bullpen's a little bit of a question mark, but you, know, you see it so many times. You get you get into a short series, and crazy stuff happens. But this Giants team. Um, certainly has enough postseason experience that you can't look past them. And after the performance from Bumgarner last night, and you look back at, at his career in the postseason, do you include him now in the conversation as one of the best postseason pitchers in Major League Baseball history? Oh, yeah, you, you, you certainly have to put him in there. Uh, certainly, of this generation, uh, I, I think he, he falls into that category. Just, the numbers speak for themselves, and especially his road numbers are just, are just insane. Um, and then you look at what he's done. You know, this doesn't fall into the postseason category, but you look at what he's done at City Field over his career. The guy's pitched to an old four something ERA at City Field, which is another amazing number. So yeah, he you put him in the, the conversation among the great all time postseason performers. Yeah, and he's been fun to watch. And, and I'll end on this note, and it, it's kind of a. Uh, you know, one of those side notes now or sidebar stories, but that catch by Curtis Granderson in the top of the sixth inning was sick last night. It was, and it, it, you know, from the Mets' perspective, unfortunately, it goes as a footnote, kind of like uh, almost the Indy Chavez catch against the Cardinals in 06. Uh, you know, if the Mets win the game, you talk about that Granderson catch forever, and now it's kind of uh, pushed down uh, in history a little bit. Mike Puma, New York Post. Great work all season long, Mike. Enjoyed reading uh, your stuff in the Post. Thanks for a few minutes here as we wrap things up uh, on the mess. We'll be back in touch. Thanks, guys. Take care. All right, you got us, uh, Mike Puma. Good job to wrap things up.